Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. It is the Earthmaster out here. Got Monday coming up right around the corner. Might be Monday for some of you folks out there. It is about 11.20 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Shows, uh, looks like, what do we got here? Uh, 4.5 in the region of Greece, it looks like, out there around the Mediterranean. A little bit of activity stirring up uh, out there right now. As uh, far as any subsequent movement following today's large earthquake there, we had a 6.5 in the Papua New Guinea area. Now, this zone had been fairly quiet. You can see it on the Earthquake 3D globe here that we've seen a, a pretty decent seismic gap here of a lack of earthquake activity. That filled in quite nicely. A little bit of pressure differences over here across the Java Trench, it looks like. Remember when these big uh, when these uh, big earthquakes shift around like that and move the plates, ultimately a lot of that strain can show up in nearby uh, fault systems or even far away fault systems here. In this case, it would be uh, roughly around the Philippines or across the Java Trench there as we're seeing right now. A little 4.0 coming in. Following this movement today, also a little bit of uptick here across the Maluka Sea region. Down in the New Zealand area, handful of earthquakes. Nothing big still. 3.3 down around the South Island area. Also odd 2.8 here across the Australia region. Don't see too much earthquake activity out there occasionally, but uh, kind of an odd one. A couple twos out there into the uh, Hawaii area around the uh, Kilauea volcano and also uh, the region around the Pahala area. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot else going on uh, around the region here of South America. Mostly smaller microquakes. Same for the Middle America Trench. Texas out here did see a little bit of moderate movement with a upper three-pointer. Let's see here. Well, maybe they downgraded it. Looks like to a 3.3. But uh, definitely a handful of earthquakes out here in the uh, desert of Texas. About 19 earthquakes showing up there uh, in that area of Texas. Nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country for now. One little earthquake this morning from the uh, around the Tennessee area. Across California, mostly smaller microquake activity. If we pull up the 2.5 map, it looks like one earthquake remains uh, around the Wesley area of California. That's off of the, uh, the coast range here, just barely into the San Joaquin Valley. Nothing big, very shallow earthquake. Couple other smaller quakes there as well. No major swarms here going on around the southern portion of the state. Nothing going on up in the Pacific Northwest either. Uh, a look at the trimmer map. Oh goodness, that is a pretty big jump in trimmer. Look at that, 522 epicenters. Uh, that's what I'm talking about here. Getting some big numbers coming back into play. Now yesterday, that was a decent amount as well. 222 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, this area of Oregon, uh, obviously underneath this region, about 35 or 45 kilometers into the Cascadia subduction zone that sits offshore. Now, of course, the plate boundary itself, the uh, interface here of the subduction zone starts right about here, but it goes underneath the North American plate. So deep, deep activity, even way deeper than 45 kilometers. You start getting into the, uh, uh, the uh, regions of the melting, of the plates and then of course you get the volcanoes up here across the cascade range but that's um that's a decent amount there so let me go back here and double check this same area 522 epicenters can't recall the last time i seen a uh a day that had 522 on it Again, all data right about here. I'm trying to think. It looks like we did have one back in, um, oh, this date. What is this? May 2023, the end of May. Looks like we've seen a little bit of uptick here, but it's been awfully quiet. But now things are starting to stir back up. So we'll watch this area. This is the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone keep an eye on that uh, for the Atlantic Ocean fairly quiet I know we have some uh, 
did have some earthquake activity out there across the area of Iceland today. Let's go to the Iceland site and check it out. See what's going on here. It's been stirring up a little bit of uh, interest. Uh, it looks like that movement here that we were looking at. I have to go back the last 24 hours to show you guys. Uh, but we had seen a pretty decent amount of earthquake activity underneath this region of Grindavik. Just entering into town as well, I should say, underneath this area. Uh, the current ongoing eruption is up across this area right here. And uh, to see this is a little surprising. Um, according to the professionals up there, they claim that it's not, uh, doesn't have anything to do with my, uh, magma migrating to this area. But, you know, if you remember back in October and November of last year, that magma intrusion dike was uh, underneath the Grindavik area as well. So I don't think that uh, it's possible we could be looking at a little bit of migration of magma. They're claiming that this is just uh, tectonic stress uh, due to the uh, land rise out here across the Savart Singhi area. I don't know about that, though, but we'll continue to watch that. If we start seeing further swarming uh, in the area, then it might be something to watch um, closely. For now, that earthquake swarm has disappeared, and uh, everything looks neutral for now. Still seeing the ongoing eruption out here, of course, around the uh, Grindavik area. I don't think we uh, halted yet. Let's go check out the Live from Iceland site here and see what's going on. Coming up on a month time frame. Uh, yeah, still active. Here's a view out here. Morning time, looks like, out there around Iceland. Still seeing, uh, you know, at least that one main area here uh, creating that, fount that fountaining of lava. No changes. All right, uh, what else we got here? Let's check out space weather activity. Oh, by the way, tomorrow, well, today, for some of you guys, uh, the 15th, we got our member drawing being held. Uh, almost forgot about that, but... Uh, We'll be doing that uh, tomorrow, Monday, late afternoon time period. I don't know about the time frame yet. Got a pretty busy schedule tomorrow, but I'll, I'll announce that in the morning times uh, when I'm doing my update. <clears throat> All right, goodness, look at these huge, giant sunspots out here. <laughs> There's, it, they're pretty large compared to what we've seen here over the last couple of weeks of, uh, you know, just these little tiny sunspots, but uh, quite... Uh, there's a couple regions out here that are quite complex. This area down here, our former sunspot, 3516, or 35, uh, 3615, excuse me, um, is still there. It's holding on. Uh, it does look like there's a couple newer regions back over here across the eastern limb we'll have to watch for. Um, so flare, obviously uh, a concern here. We could be seeing some larger flare activity from a number of the sunspots. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 45, X flare around 5% chance or so. And as you can see, we are sizzling here with a lot of C flare activity and an occasional M flare. Uh, when things are crackling like this, obviously it means that uh, we could be looking at some larger scale activity here soon. Far as the auroras go, um, goodness, I think uh, I think that missed us. We were expecting some type of geomagnetic storm here uh, tonight, and um, I don't see any sign of it. Didn't see any uh, elevated KP index. Everything looks calm here across the Aurora board. So um, I would say that it missed us or it's arriving late. Here's a visible list here of the sunspots. Again, uh, these large regions here, you know, they've... they've uh, They've seen better days, but there's still quite a bit of complexity within this one up here, 36, 39. Either way, we'll continue to watch all these and uh, report back on any changes. All right, severe weather potential here tomorrow. They've revised things here. Look at this. They've definitely updated the enhanced area more towards the northern areas here. Um, a couple days ago, that was positioned more across this area with concern for severe weather, but... Looks like uh, there's a pretty decent chance for tornado probability out here with a 5% chance covering uh, four or five states or so out here. Uh, a lot of population density out there as well. 
So looks like six over six million people. So just a heads up. Uh, also, that includes a green area for tornado probability. Uh, wind, somewhat of a big deal, but I think the main threat tomorrow is going to be some very large hail. I've got a huge hatched area out here uh, that runs from about uh, southern Kansas all the way up into Nebraska and South Dakota. Also down here across Texas, there's a little hatched area that we got to watch as well. So uh, stay weather aware for the Monday a lot of people going back to work make sure you got some type of protection there for your car uh, in terms of preventing hail damage all right uh, and then after that let's see what we got here here's Monday setup low pressure out here that gave us quite a bit of rain out here and some cooler temperatures in California that's gonna stir up the severe weather for Monday out in this area of the world or uh, area of the country um, after that, uh, some colder air ventures back down here into the uh, center portion of the country towards Friday. Uh, this weekend, it does look like we'll see maybe some limited shower activity down in Texas. And as we look at next week here, uh, hard to say exactly what's going to happen out here, but it does look like some unsettled conditions all across the area. That's... Uh, Pretty decent amount of moisture coming in there to Texas. And a lot of these areas could use the moisture. Uh, having, having to deal with some drought out there recently. Look at that. Lots of moisture being pulled up here. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. And uh, take a closer look at it once we get there. All right, folks. I am out of here. Looks like some type of uh, instrument adjustment going on here across this Yellowstone station. Sometimes they do it. Uh, but I'm sure that will fix itself. Uh, aside from that, things are pretty calm right now. Haven't really seen any uh, uh, major activity from that 6.5 today. Uh, I see a glimpse of it here on the Yellowstone station. Looks like it's going to be right about here. Some S waves coming in uh, that showed up uh, across various stations. But as far as local seismic activity here at Yellowstone, looks like there was one or two out here across the eastern area of Yellowstone National Park. Very small earthquakes here, but uh, a little bit there. And they won't show up here on the USGS map until tomorrow morning. But once the uh, USGS gets in the office there and uh, takes a look at the uh, seismographs and those signatures. All right, folks, um, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good night. See you guys back here tomorrow morning for the Monday start of a new work week. Stay safe out there.